Hello and welcome to the 1100 Project with me, Stuart White, Right Mentor founder and self-published author. And I'm delighted to say that I can officially call myself a published author now that my book is officially out into the world. So today we're going to be talking a little bit about my book launch, my publication day, and then what comes after that, the post-launch period. I think for me personally, it's been a bit of a strange couple of days. So I think I spoke to you last week and I was talking about the nervousness and excitement of a launch coming up and it was it was tricky. Um I was I was struggling to navigate those feelings. I think overall I was I was excited and um although I was a wee bit nervous, I think the excitement was overtaking that. And I was thinking about all the hard work and effort that I put in over the last year all of the different things I've done to get to this stage. And I was feeling quite proud of the things that I'd done. I was feeling that I had done almost everything as well as I could do. And that the final product that I was putting out there into people's hands, the book that they were going to read, was as good as I was able to get it on a a sort of one-person basis. Although... As I mentioned, actually, my launch last night, it's a a total misnomer, isn't it, to say self-publishing, because although you're ultimately in charge of everything, you work with a a large number of people in order to produce the book. So, yeah, the the feelings from last week, I don't think they quite transcended into publication day. And it was interesting for me because I was expecting to be a a bit more excited throughout the day. I was expecting to be a bit happier about it all. And I think what this all comes down to, it's the whole thing about when you measure life by the outcomes and the things that you want to achieve and think that there's some sort of holy grail of happiness there when you achieve those outcomes, then often you'll feel disappointed a lot of the time. And and that was certainly the, the case for me when it eventually got to publication day, all the daydreaming and imaginations that I'd had of what that day might be like. And over the last 10 to 15 years, I've had a lot of those daydreams. It didn't quite pan out the same way as I imagined it would. And that's not to say that it wasn't great and that I didn't get a lot of support and that there were certain aspects of it I really enjoyed. But it was it was different to, to the... Yeah, to the imagined version that I'd had in my head. And that that was um, a tricky thing to deal with emotionally throughout the day and obviously um, since as well when I've been reflecting upon it. So, yeah, emotionally, it, it was, it's, been, it's, been, it's been weird. I, I, don't know, I don't know how best to describe it other than to say that if you, you are resting all your hopes upon this, this one glorious day that's going to make you happy and is going to make everything worthwhile, then that might not necessarily come for you, as it hasn't necessarily for me. I, as I say, I appreciate all the support. I was really happy and so on, but just not, not quite that sort of bubble of happiness that I expected from the day. So yeah, it's, uh, yeah, mixed mixed emotions. But let's let's talk a little bit more specifically about things rather than sort of general feelings around it. So, and I, and I guess this is like an important lesson for you if you are considering self-publishing. I do think that my greatest enjoyment came out of the, the actual preparation period and the lead up to the launch and, and getting everything ready. And um, I, there were times where it was, it was pretty miserable during it. But, you know, as I was putting the fin- finishing touches and things, I felt a, a high degree of satisfaction. I was really enjoying the process. As I say, maybe that is maybe that is where ultimately the the happiness comes from 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 doing this. It's not it's not publication day. It's not how many books you sell. It's not all of the outcome based things. It's the process based things and the I guess internal satisfaction that you get from learning a new skill and from managing to execute that skill to a, a reasonable standard. I think that is maybe where the the real inner happiness comes from, and it's maybe not just a a, a one off bubble of happiness that swells around you on that one day so yeah let's let's talk specifics then sorry I've, I've, I've got a tendency to get a bit metaphorical and talk about my emotions and feelings but what what specifically did I do well as I spoke to you last time I was talking about what um I'd done in the lead up to the launch but the actual launch day 
So I, I woke up, I was thinking immediately about the video uh, that I'd posted and I'd scheduled for that morning um, announcing it was publication day. I did a bit of a fun video with my daughter where we um, literally launched a, a rocket into the sky and obviously I photoshopped a, a copy of my book onto the rocket to, to make it look like I was literally launching the book. Um, and that was a bit of fun and actually I really enjoyed doing that. I did that the night before publication day with my daughter and I was going to just do it myself but she insisted on being part of it and really enjoyed it so that was um that was quite actually quite a nice experience and in some ways maybe even the highlight of the whole thing because it was it was you know it's, it's, it's for Eva a lot of this and so spending a bit of time with her where she was enjoying things in the build-up to the book launch was was nice actually so yeah I, I posted that video I scheduled it for the first thing on uh, the Monday morning and got a great reception to it I think there's over 40,000 views on it and that's um yeah I, I it's nice to to see that it resonated with people and people were happy for me and you know a bit of a daft video um, but a bit quirky like me a bit weird um was something that people enjoyed watching so that was quite nice uh, to wake up to and I obviously got a lot of replies to that particular post people wishing me happy publication day which was was nice um, I enjoyed every one of those. I, I didn't. I don't think I managed to reply to everyone because at one point I had hundreds of notifications. I, I just couldn't. There was no way that I had the mental capacity to go through and, and do that. But then I tried throughout the rest of the day as it calmed down a little bit as the day went on. I tried to reply to everyone individually as the messages came in a little bit later on. So I guess if you messaged me later, you probably had a greater chance of getting a response from me. But yeah, I woke up and I was I spent about an hour, an hour and a half on the computer just looking through messages, replying to people, et cetera, et cetera. And then I decided to get out of the house. So I took the kids to the, the swimming pool and we, we messed about there for a couple hours um, before I came back home and had a look at the notifications again, which had obviously blown up in that time. And again, like really nice. I, like I, I, I can't emphasize enough how appreciative I am for all the support that I've got not just in the last day or two, but throughout this whole thing. And people are um, rooting for me. People, you know, want me to do well. I think a lot of people as well are, are watching what I'm doing because it's something they maybe fancy doing themselves. So they're, you know, they're keen to, to follow and, and see what I've done and see if it can work out for them too. And I guess that's the purpose of me sharing all of this via the podcast is that maybe a few of you out there will think, well, oh, actually, you know, I'd, I'd like to try that. I'd like to give that a go. Um, and we'll talk we'll talk a little bit more about that shortly but yeah that's what I'm I'm thinking there's a lot of people who are listening to this especially will be thinking so um the launch day then went on to the late afternoon still lots of messages and stuff it was nice but then I started to get really nervous about the the launch day and I had a wee look in the the zoom registration for the online launch in the evening and noticed that the numbers had gone up quite significantly and we had to put 150 people coming and I panicked because I've only got a Zoom license for up to 100 people so I was I was trying to sort of work out in my head I was like okay well when we do a, a right mentor event usually only between 10 and 30 percent of people who sign up actually show up and so on and I was saying okay this is going to be fine you know even even if like a high percentage of people uh, show up it will still be fine and so uh, but I was still getting a wee bit nervous and um, you know, anyway, we got we got to the the online launch eventually at seven in the evening and popped in, and way more people than I had envisaged uh, came along. And I was seeing all the names popping in of people who I know well, and you know, even people who probably listen to this podcast and people who have followed me and Right Mentor and all the things I've been doing over the last uh, decade or so. Um, all these people were just popping into the the room and. I, I've got to be honest, I did. I felt a bit overwhelmed, a wee bit emotional about it all. Um, I, yeah, froze a little bit when it came to a couple of the aspects of the evening as well. Forgot to mention loads of people I should really have thanked in terms of producing the book. Um, I just, I, yeah, I, I, I froze a little bit. And as I say, it was, it was, it was nice to have all the people there support me and so on, but it was a wee bit more than maybe I'd expected. And that's that's a wee lesson learned for me for next time maybe that I should try and make it maybe a smaller more intimate thing so that I'm I don't get that feeling um and, and the other thing actually that, that kind of occurred to me as it was all happening was 
I'd love to speak to the people that had come along on a more individual basis rather than, you know, as, as, as with a Zoom call, you kind of need to lead the call a bit and everyone's kind of a passive participant that's that's come along. And whereas with a, an in-person launch, it's a wee bit more interactive and you can maybe go and speak to people on an individual basis and so on. It's a bit of a longer evening as well. And yeah, so that is something I was considering as well as it was all happening. I was like, oh, I wish I could chat to X, Y, or Z. And yeah, so I think I've kind of made up my mind based on that experience that the next time I launch a book, I will do a, an in-person launch and try and see if I can get people to come along and then, you know, maybe be a wee bit more intimate, not as many people, obviously, because it's not as accessible for people to pop along in person, but then I might get a chance to chat to people and 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 that's, I think that's what I would I would prefer. Uh, so that's, yeah, anyway, that's, that's just something that was rumbling through my head throughout the launch, but um, Melissa and Florian were, were hosting for me and they, they did a really good job that I was really pleased with the way they, they sort of formatted and set out the evening and we did a, a fun quiz, two truths and a lie and some Mars quiz questions we did a, an, a, did, I had to do a reading, again I was feeling a bit overwhelmed at that stage, I was, I was a wee bit nervous doing it but uh, I managed to get through that and I finished off with a Q&A which was really nice actually because People were asking me lots of really good, interesting questions, and a lot of them were you know, just based upon, I guess, the self-publishing process, which people maybe know a little bit less about than traditional. I'm, I'm not really sure where people's knowledge lies, but I certainly get more questions about that than maybe you would at another book launch for someone else who went maybe tried because there's a, a wee bit more to demystify there and. Uh, yeah, it was it was quite nice though. It was interesting. I, I love chatting about that kind of stuff, as you know from from doing this podcast. So uh, I really, really enjoyed that. And obviously, if anyone is listening to this as well at any point and thinks of a question, then you can pop a reply in, in the YouTube channel beneath the video if you're watching there. Um, you can obviously tweet me. Just get in touch with me at Twitter as well. I'm, I'm on there probably most out of everything. So that's maybe the best place to get a hold of me. And you can you can ask and I'm. I know the answer I'll, I'll be happy to help you so yeah the, the launch itself and it, it came to an end and I was I was a little bit sad actually at the end because I felt like I was just getting warmed up and I was st just starting to and really enjoy myself and then we obviously had to finish but that's that's fair enough you can't you can't take up too much of people's time and uh, yeah it was it was nice so I think overall I enjoyed it I think I'd still do another online launch that's it's good to do that for the point of view of you know accessibility and making sure everyone can come along and celebrate with me that wants to but yeah I think I, I think I will do a, a physical launch as well next time so that's something that I'll uh, that's a new thing that I'll need to learn about how to organize and to implement and try and make it successful for next time but you know I like I like those kind of challenges so it's something to look forward to so yeah, how how did it go afterwards? Well, last night I felt I was I was really wired. I could not sleep, so I sat up really late. I ended up trying to record a couple of videos for my YouTube channel, and uh, I, I found at the end of it, I was sort of like, "Oh, I think I've just whittled on for way too long, and I've not been concise. I've not been to the point. I don't think the video actually is very good, so I've, I've actually just been." Uh, an hour or so's worth of, of recordings from last night. But I, I was one of those things I needed an outlet, I think, because of how wired I was post-launch. And maybe, again, if I was to sort of plan it and organise it all again, I'd maybe just do like a social bit after uh, an online launch. So just do, do the actual launch stuff for an hour or so, but then maybe just have a wee social bit after and people want to hang on the call and just have a wee natter, a wee chat. That might um, that might be a, you know, a good way to sort of outlet some of that that energy I don't I don't really know there's, there's something to consider for next time though because I was up till I think about half one two last night and that's not good when you're you're up first thing in the morning with the two and a half year old um and you're, you're trying to be at your best for for the kids as well so yeah it was it was a bit of a a, a wired time after the the launch so and then that obviously led into today. I was, yeah, I didn't actually feel too tired this morning. I was okay. Again, probably some of that uh, adrenaline from last night still coursing through my bloodstream. 
you know, chemical messengers waking me up and um, putting a bit more glucose in my blood. Actually, I was high in glucose today, and I, I wonder if that's part of the reason. Uh, the, as, as many of you know, I'm, I'm type 1 diabetic, so controlling glucose levels is a tricky old thing, and yeah, I wonder if that was that was part of it, maybe. But yeah, I'd, I just felt like a bit restless today. Uh, felt like there was a big hole in my, my mental capacity that had been consumed a little bit by the book coming out, the launch and so on. And yeah, that, that just obviously had evaporated overnight. And I, don't, I, don't, I guess I, I should enjoy the extra freedom in my head, but part of me felt, yeah, a bit restless and not really sure what to do. And so I've, I've filled the day doing an assortment of odd little things as well as spending time with the kids. Like my, my son's currently obsessed with the, the rocket machine that I've got. And so we're shooting a rocket across the living room for a, a fair bit of the day and such things. So yeah, I've been filling up with, with things. Um, but my, my mind's also been on, okay, what can I think about that's not the book? Because I think really, you know, that, and this is, this is something that I've, I've known for weeks and I've been trying for weeks. Um, but you write a book and you have to remember, it's just a small part of this bigger picture that, you know, that you're embarking upon and whether you're traditionally published or self, the key is to start thinking about the next book, you know, well in advance of the previous book being published. So I've obviously been writing the next book. I've been also planning the next book I'm going to publish, which is already written and just needs to be edited and get the cover and so on sorted and, and other things as well. And so that's where my mind's been sort of wandering to a little bit today to get refocused on those things. There's there's a lot to do, and I wonder if the energy, the nervous energy in particular that I've put towards this launch um, has, has maybe drained me a wee bit, and so I wasn't maybe as productive as I could have been on that front. But yeah, I've been, I've been focusing ahead and thinking, okay, uh, in you know, six months I want to do this, and one year I want to do this, and 18 months I want to do this, and you know, and that's quite good in terms of moving on because there's been the temptation a few times today as well to look at the old sales dashboard online and see how many copies of the book I've sold, um, how many people are interacting with the Amazon page, how many, what ratings I am, what rankings I am in, in the various charts and all the marketplaces and stuff. It's it's quite easy to get a little bit obsessed by all that stuff and I've been trying to avoid that throughout the day. And it's been a wee bit tricky, but I've I've managed to to do it on the most part but it's actually been another quite good day in terms of like sales and so on I'll, I'll fill you in more about that in, in a wee moment but yes yeah, as people have been obviously picking up on on yesterday who maybe weren't around and so on seen the books out and have bought a copy which has been nice and I'll yeah I'll, I'll fill you in on all the the specifics of the numbers in a few minutes but yeah I think uh, moving on is the is the next step for me and whatever whatever kind of author you are the key is to go into the next book and to write the next book and to get the next book out. There's a lot of um, figures and studies have been done with with authors, both traditionally and self-published, and they you basically need to have a decent sized backlist before you have any sort of chance of making a, a livable income from writing. And it's they, they they say there's the the race to ten, the race to twenty in self-publishing. So the race to ten to start making a reasonable income from self-publishing you need to have 10 books that are out and uh, that you're pushing all the time and promoting and then there's the race to 20 which is where the point where you start getting uh, enough money that you can maybe consider giving up your day job or something similar provided obviously those those 10 or 20 books are are decent and are selling and that's obviously another factor you don't want to race to those numbers just to get to an arbitrary number and, and the quality of your books and the sales of your books are really low that would obviously be counterintuitive um, to, to do that. So, yeah, you obviously still got to maintain high standards as you go, but uh, in some ways it's about how many books you get out and how how quickly. And that's one of the reasons why, especially for new authors, you know, maybe someone who's writing their first book, and I, I do I come across um, fellow writers who are like this, who have been working on one book for five, ten years, and they, and they finished it years and years ago but they're still working on it and they're still polishing it and they're still saying this is the one this is the one this is the one this is the one and you know what even if it is the one and it does well you still have to write another book and you know and I would say my advice to, to anyone who is still quite early on is the key mental barrier to go over is to 
let go of a book and go on to the next one, and then let go of a book and go on to the next one. And actually, the the years of failure for me and and of rejection have stood me in um in a in a good position now because I'm I'm quite adept at that and and I'm a lot less focused on that one project as being the thing I'm going to hope that will help me to break out or make it bigger, whatever other aspirations we have on our first novel. And in some ways, I think it's still important to have those kind of hopes for it because I think that's what keeps you going. And a lot of people would give up if they, they didn't have that hope for the first novel, but there's there's a balance to be had there about moving on and writing the next one, um, even before your, your first one's found a home or has done well. And it, you know, and, and that that obviously stands you in good stead, as I said, for further up along your career. And especially if you go trad, you're expected to write new books frequently. Uh, Self published, you've got to write new books uh, frequently if you want to to keep up momentum and to start building an audience and to start ultimately making enough money from selling the books to continue. Because with self publishing, you're outlaying all the finances for every new project. That you embark upon and sometimes you haven't yet recouped even the money from the previous one and, and that's certainly the case for me where I have yet to recoup the investment I made in, in Ghosts of Mars and I, I do hope that I will over the course of the next year or two but I now need to invest again in the next book and probably before I've recouped I'll invest in two, three, four, five more books and so it's, it's you know it's, it's like any new business you've got to invest initially in the hope that you'll get a return further down the line and if you're if, you know if you're wise and you're confident enough in your product and you do things sensibly then that's obviously possible and so but that's again something to consider if you're going to go down this line is that treating it like a business is important if you want to to make a, a living out of it or a career out of it eventually further down the line which is obviously one of my ambitions but some people maybe will just say, well, I just want to publish one book so I can show it with my friends and family, in which case a lot of this advice wouldn't necessarily be as applicable to you. So anyway, that's, that's another um, sort of divergent thought from me there, but it's one that, um, that has certainly been on my mind as we've gone into the post-launch period and I'm thinking ahead again. So a wee update then on how sales have been going because... I had a certain target for the pre-order sales of uh, selling 100 books in the pre-order period so that when it was finally launched, I would need to sell 900 more over the next 12 months. And I thought that was that was a fairly realistic um, number to go for. And I'm really delighted to say that we have surpassed that quite comfortably. It's, I think... <sighs> I I need to add on a couple from from alternative sources and so on, but we're definitely over the one fifty mark now, which is which is great, um for a, for a pre order period. And as I say, there's been sales today as well, which I need to add on to that total through through Amazon and a couple through uh, Ingram Spark, who do the 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 orders for the likes of Waterstones and your your local indies and stuff. So uh, there's a yeah, there's it's going well at the moment. However. I'm also very consciously aware that the best book sales come, you know, at, at launch time and in the 90 days beyond that. And also that I wonder how many of those 150 that have sold so far have come from friends and family and just people who who know me well and who are sending good wishes as opposed to people who are like just discovering me and, and sort of reading my book and I get and and this is the thing that you have to be realistic about is that it's unlikely that there's many in that camp maybe over time there will be one or two that will sort of build in, in that audience and who will discover me um and you know in my my readership audience which is obviously the 9 to 12 range but hoping that it's applicable as well to kids maybe a wee bit older than that too and I'm yeah I'm hoping that that obviously that audience is going to build over time but yeah, it's, it's really it's really tricky to 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 know at this stage, and the, you know if I extrapolated the current sales rate, I would say that we're going to hit obviously a thousand within the year, no problem. But the likelihood is, like like anything, we'll see that sort of sort of sharper increase initially, but eventually that will start curving around and it will plateau at some stage, and we will get to you know three hundred sales or five hundred sales or seven hundred, and then it will start leveling off. And unless I'm dynamic about my approach over the next year that's an inevitability and so the only way to 
to counteract that and to potentially stop that from happening is to make sure that I am being quite fluid with my approach to, to marketing and publicity, that I'm ensuring that I'm getting the book in front of as many of the potential readers as I can and taking all of those opportunities. And I'm, I'm obviously doing a lot of work in the background at the moment to make sure that I do do that. I've been like booking in for school visits, for example. Um, I've had another couple in the last few days since I last did an episode. I put a thing out on Twitter about you know people saying I'm available for virtual visits Thursday, Fridays, the coming term, and you know they're starting to um, pick up, which is nice and it's good, and it means that more kids who will potentially like the book will get an introduction to me and the book, and they, you know they might they might buy a copy or they. Or they might, um, they might not, I guess. But you know, you've you've got to just keep putting yourself in front of it. And for every, you know, fifty kids that see it, you might only get one or two that buy it. But if one or two of them then love it, they might recommend it to a pal. And you know, and that's how these things spread, isn't it? Word of mouth from an enjoyable thing gets passed on to someone else, and it maybe escalates. And and so that's what I'm hoping for. Um, and as I say, I'm, I need to be dynamic and fluid with my approach over the next twelve months to make sure that there's no stagnation and plateau of the of the numbers of books that I'm selling, but I have got already got plans and I've, I've looked ahead um, and have got different things coming up in the next two to three months that I hope will help to keep interest there, uh, continue to engage people and obviously, hopefully they, they actually buy the book. Uh, so, we'll, but we'll see, you know, it's, it's all an experiment with this first book and um, I'm very open to, to failure. I'm, I'm happy if some of the things that I do don't work because then I can say, well, that doesn't work and I can rule it out for the future in terms of my time and energy and money in terms of all all the, the things that cost me I, I won't need to spend on in the future. And then the things that do work, I can then obviously use those uh, more frequently with both this book and any, any future ones as well that I publish uh, going forward. So anyway, it's... it's, it's Without getting into the, the nitty gritty of it, there's there's a lot um, in my mind, there's a lot of plans and ideas about going forward and I'm hoping that we can continue to have a, a nice upward sales pattern in terms of the books. But you know, if if, if I don't and things don't work out then you know there's 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 plan B's and plan C's and plan D's and so on to to try and help me through those those trickier periods. So that's a wee update, I guess, on on sales and how things are going. Oh, and I should say for reviews, I'm still at the same point as I was last week, but that's um, because people have probably not finished the book yet. And so, you know, we need to give that a few weeks for people to finish the book and for more reviews to start coming in. But yeah, we're still at eight on Amazon and four on Goodreads. So um, hopefully yeah, more more to come in over the next couple of months. And again, with, with that kind of thing, I, I know my, myself when I buy a book, uh, you know, a friend's book or just a random book on Amazon, I do need the prompt to go and leave a review. So that's something I'll be doing in the, the gentlest of ways over the next few months as well to make sure that I'm reminding people to go and do that and you know the, the impact of it and how much it helps to an author if you do go ahead and do that. And I think it's, it's maybe something that a lot of authors out there don't do enough, maybe. I'd, I'd, you know, Maybe some people are just happy with how things are going they don't need to push it or some people feel awkward about it but it's something that is a necessity i believe and so it is something i'm going to have to do whether people um love it or not and and to be honest i can't i can't see any harm like if i see someone put up a tweet that says if you've read my book and you loved it can you leave me a review right if you've read it and loved it then go ahead and leave them a review and if you haven't then just you know walk on by it's not it's not like a, a personal attack on you or anything so i think it's a reasonable thing to keep putting out there and keep asking people for so yeah we'll see how it goes over the, the next few months in terms of sales and reviews but i'll keep you up to date on that particular front because obviously that's the the uh, the outcome based metric that the whole project is resting upon and i don't want to leave you in the dark when it comes to these things i want to be open and transparent about everything as I have been thus far. So I want to finish on a, a, a more reflective note at the, the end of this particular episode. And it's based upon a question that someone asked me at the launch last night. And it's a, a good question. And it's one that's always worth considering at every stage, you know, whether you're quite near the start, in the middle of it, you're at this stage, or even what I'll be in, in six months time, or 12 months time, or five years or 10 years time, always worth reflecting on this question. And the question was, has it all been worth it so far? 
It was a it was a good question, and I I think the overall answer is definitely yes. I'm very much there's more in the pros column than there is in the cons column at the, at this stage. I, the, the hard part the hard part is obviously the investment, you know, of you, your time, your energy, your money, and and to be honest, a huge amount of your mental capacity. I I think that part can't be underestimated. You know, the time, energy, money is one thing, but how much of your your working capacity in your brain it consumes at any given time is a, a factor that people should keep in mind when they, they decide to go go ahead and do it. it. It does, I think about it all the time, every single day, several times a day for a good proportion of you know, even when I'm at, even when I work at school, like I'm sitting down in between lessons or at break or lunch or whatever, and I start thinking about it again. And you know, you switch off for a wee while, but it comes back. And yeah, it's, you've got to be prepared for that. Um, I think if you if you decide to do it, and yeah, that's 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 been probably the biggest con for me. Um, secondary to that is obviously the money you have to invest without any guarantee you'll get a return on it. But the pros far outweigh those cons. So the the feeling that I've had of taking control of my own destiny, of being an autonomous creator, someone who is an entrepreneurial author, someone who can decide my own fate when it comes to writing, that, I mean, even just on its own, that would be enough of a pro, I think, to overcome those other things. But there's so many other um, aspects. There's the support that I've garnered in, in doing that. There's the skills and knowledge and lessons that I've learned through through doing it, through both learning and through experience of actually doing so many of these things. And I, I'm, I'm hoping that I'll be able to give that back, both through these podcasts and through other means over the coming years. There's been the opportunity to do the, the school visits I've got coming up as well, to actually interact with kids, which as a school teacher already, it's something that I love doing. And if there's even one kid who will read the book and be inspired by it or who will meet me at a school visit online or in person and feel like they want to be a writer or they want to even just write alongside whatever else they do in life, then obviously that will be worth it. And and, and again, that's one of those things, the magnitude of that pro just blasts all the cons out of the water, I think. And and that's yeah, that's that's my feelings at this particular stage. Has it been worth it? It absolutely has. And and I say that knowing that I've invested a lot of time, energy and money into it that I've not recouped or will will perhaps never recoup. The you know, time lost with, with family or working and other things that um, you know, potentially, you know, work stuff that could earn me money or, you know, leisure things that could bring me more joy or family things which again would bring me more joy there's a lot of things that you have to sort of sacrifice and put aside but I think the overall net gain for me has been greater than the investment in becoming a self-published author and so therefore overall it has definitely been worth it and that's something every individual has to assess both prior to even beginning during and then after self-publishing a novel and taking stock of that and doing that regularly is going to be something that I'm going to integrate into into my own thought process because I'd, I'd, I'm an overthinker in case you, you didn't know and I constantly think about things that I don't necessarily need to think about at the time and fill up my brain capacity so that it's overflowing almost every day to, much to my detriment and I'm, I'm very conscious of it too and um, trying to f- take steps to to reduce the amount of clutter in there but yeah it's something that I, I do need to keep considering and saying well actually is this particular thing that I'm doing of value to me is it enhancing my life or the life of those around me and 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 I don't just mean overall in self, terms of self-publishing I mean individual facets of it as well I'll need to make a call on an individual basis for each of those as well to see if it's something I'm going to continue doing as I go forward with this particular project and you know the obviously the subsequent projects that I'm I'm looking to go after next and I'm I'm actually really excited because someone someone asked me this question in the the launch last night but they asked me about the next book and 
they were I think they were actually asking about subsequent Team Mars adventures with with Eva and her world, and there will be those. But also, I've got someone asked about I think time travel or alternative universes in the question, and excitingly, I, that is what I plan to have as my next release, as my next book, is one that features that. And obviously, it's a, it's a, it's a subgenre that uh, I particularly love. I'm a huge Doctor Who fan, as I'm sure some of you who are listening are as well, and I try to sort of channel that Doctor Who energy into this kids' novel that I wrote a couple of years ago, and I'm hoping to release that as well uh, later this year. So a lot of my energy and focus is going to be going on to that now, as well as to obviously continue with the publicity and marketing side of things for for Ghosts of Mars at the same time. And as I said earlier on, I'm also drafting an- another book, um, which which did well in a competition recently. Uh, with a view to releasing that at some point and then I will be going on to the, the sequel to Ghost of Mars and getting that uh, drafted up and edited and out for hopefully the, on my, my spreadsheet of Doom it's scheduled in for February of next year around about this time Ghost of Mars 2 but we'll see if we we'll see if we can keep it all, all on schedule because as you know life gets busy uh, I have lots of priorities and uh, if I if I could just sit and do myself publishing stuff all day, it would be no problem. But w- I've got all the other real life stuff in the way, as, as probably all of you do as well, and they um, often take priority over uh, things like our creative sides and the things that we do to yeah have that outlet in that part of our brain. But anyway, I am I'm, I'm rabbiting on a bit now, so I think I'll wrap things up for this uh, particular post launch episode. And I hope that you've enjoyed some of the insights and the the honest emotional and uh, feeling based responses that I've given you um, for both the lead up during and after launch time. As I say, it feels a bit a bit overwhelming at the time. I feel a wee bit empty today, and I guess I'm just moving on to the next thing now to try and maybe fill that gap a bit. I, do, I probably don't need to fill the gap in my head, but I. I am with with what's coming next so um, lots of exciting things ahead as well as trying to maintain the buzz around this uh, latest release so it's yeah it's a, it's a nice time to to be part of this and to be doing this and yeah as I, as I reflected just a moment ago it has all been worth it up until this stage and that's a nice little point to finish on I think so thanks very much for joining me again for this latest episode of the 1100 project And I'll see you all next time. May the force be with you.